Dr. Carvajal, uh, I'd like to ask a question about uh, the issue of solitary confinement. And that, of course, is described in many different ways. Uh, I believe restricted housing is the term that BOP uses. I've heard administrative separation, a number of different categories, but it usually means that a, an inmate is confined to their cell for up to 22 hours a day and given opportunity to uh, leave the cell for exercise or other reasons for may maybe one or two hours. Is, is that a general definition that fits with BOP guidelines? Yes, Senator. So I'd like to ask you this. First, uh, I'm starting with a premise I want to see if you agree with on based on a lifetime of service in correctional institutions uh, and your current position. The Department of Justice uh, issued a report in 2016 that noted that the use of restricted housing, quote, can cause serious long-lasting long harm and should be, quote, used only as necessary and never as a default situation. Do you accept or disagree with that conclusion? Yes, Senator, it's a, it's, it's a bit more uh, difficult because, as you, as you said, I spent 29 years in the system. Uh, uh, it's our jail within the jail. Uh, I'm not, uh, we've always looked for alternatives and other ways to do it. It should be a last resort. But there are people who, under circumstances, because of behavior or violence, things like that, there's going to be a need for it. But we can, we can do better, and we've done that in the Bureau of Prisons. we found alternative ways. We certainly try to do more out-of-cell programming uh, for the reasons you stated. But let me give you a quick example of, of the irony here. Much of the scrutiny we received during COVID was how we were isolating inmates. The, the word in and of itself, isolation, it requires us to place someone in a cell by themselves for medical reasons. So there, there's a simple irony that we're being scrutinized for restrictive housing, yet you want us to medically isolate somebody, and then we have to balance that. So there is a difference. We have found alternatives. In fact, your facility in Thompson is serving that purpose. Uh, they're called half of that mission, as you're well aware, Senator, is the special management unit. The other half of that, I'm proud to say, is a reintegration housing unit. There's 700 inmates uh, on that side in a reintegration housing unit that would otherwise be in special housing based on their issues, uh, whether it's management or protective custody. So we utilize that facility. Half of that mission is to prevent and keep people as much as possible out of restrictive housing. So we're continuously looking at this. Our numbers have gone down. They were well over 10,000, as you well aware. I know this is a, an issue that's been uh, close to you and you monitor. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we were already dropping them down. In my prior position as, as assistant director, I was supporting Director Hawk Sawyer's uh, uh, vision to lower those numbers. And that's how we came up with the restrictive or the reintegration housing unit. So we are looking at ways to lower that number and alternatives, but it is something serious and we get inmates out of their cell as much as possible. And we certainly have procedures to check on them routinely and provide them the same services. Let me add for the record, uh, so my position is clear, that I visited a maximum security uh, prison in state prison in Illinois and went into an area where there was virtual solitary confinement. Uh, they were just a few exceptions. And I, eye to eye, spoke to the inmates. And I'll never forget one who looked to me like a mild-mannered college professor. And I said to him, what are you here for? He says, originally or since I've been in prison. And I says, today. He said, well... He says, I told him if they put someone in the cell with me, I'd kill him, and I did. He just said it that matter of fact. And I've since explored the case. That's exactly what happened. There's no doubt that that man should be in solitary confinement until such time as there is assurance he's not, not a harm, a person that will harm a, another person with him. I understand that. There are people who fit into that category. But I'm trying to weigh what the Department of Justice said in 2016 with the cost of solitary confinement to someone who is not in a desperate situation like the one I described. Now, I hear you saying when we have to deal with social distancing, I'm separating some people for medical reasons, it sounds like you're saying, and I don't want those counted against me in terms of efforts to reduce 
restricted housing. Is that a fair summary of what you said? Yes, Senator. I, I just uh, I, I want to reiterate the challenges that we undergo in our environment. You know, certainly if we can find alterators, al alternative methods to house somebody, we're always going to do that. Uh, having been a warden many years and, and working through this, there are always, as you described, there are always people who are going to have to be there for everyone's safety. But most of those folks uh, have committed some kind of misconduct or something, and we are finding alternative methods to deal with that as appropriate. Uh, and we do that when we can, and we're committed to doing that going forward. Uh, I want to thank you uh, for being here. And uh, I'm sorry it took two years. <laughs> we should be meeting on a more regular basis. The participation of the members of the committee is an indication that we all have an interest in what you're doing. It's very critically important to the security of America uh, and to proving our humanity in the process. So I thank you for uh, being here today.